Can you talk a little bit more about the church summit? Yes. Um, I mean, you know, the information you gave us in the first session was really good. And, uh, you know, there was some new stuff that you had that I hadn't seen before. But I'm a little unclear on what what we do with, what, what you or what NCC is doing with this. I mean, is it that you're saying, okay, this church is a village church, but maybe the pastor's operating in the family or the board's operating county church or whatever, and you're trying to synchronize that because you think that will be a healthier church, is that the purpose of it, or is the purpose of it to say, you know, here we are, you know, if we want to move to the next stage, if we say, well, we're a family church, we want to become a village church because we want to grow, so we start acting like a village church, I, I'm not clear what you're doing with it, and then, you know, what exactly does the summit do with it? It is not unusual for a church, for an assessment to reveal that a church is working all over the place. Okay. You, you might have a county-sized church in a facility that's actually appropriate for a family. You might have a pastor who functions who works in a way that would be quite appropriate in a family-sized church, but the church is actually the size of a village or even a nation, and the pastor is trying to function in a way that would be appropriate. A board, uh, all of these. Until, and there, there are two kinds of uh, changes, transitional change and transformation. We refer to transformational change when moving from one type to another. Transitional change is when there is misalignment within a type. So there's no congruence. The size, the number of people is, is the barometer against which other things are measured. So a church of 35, let's say, which would fall into our village type. If the pastor is functioning in the 
way of a pastor of a family church, that village church, the number will soon revert to a family church because that's how the pastor functions. That's how the pastor sees the pastor's own role and sees the church. The board might be functioning in a way that would be appropriate for a nation. But there's, therefore, there's no congruence. There is no solid, the church is not standing on a solid ground. And so it cannot move forward because it's too many levels trying to manage at one time. So the first thing would be to make some transitional changes to bring the church into congruence with its size. And then make some, then it will be possible to do the transformational work of doing the changes throughout the church system that will be needed to move it successfully into the next size category. And so the work, the assessment from the size summit is identifies the where there is, where things are out of congruence and recommends transitional changes and depending upon the circumstances of the particular congregation, could also recommend transformational changes. Like you're on the edge, only you would, you could be a place that would accommodate and be a system that could contain the, you know, more people, you know, grow into the next size. But again, so we, so the recommendations are both transitional and transformational when, when appropriate. Can you talk a little bit more? I know it's all detailed, and that's what I'm assuming at the summit. But can you talk a little bit more, at least the theory behind what you're doing, transforming to change? In other words, I mean, is it simply this is where you are, your family, we have you now acting as a family church? You want to move to the village side, so you need to become this. Is, is that the theory behind it, or is there? More in there. I'm not understanding the theory. There, in, I kind of did the theory this morning. <laughs> um, the theory is that if you are, if you wish to be a place that has that makes a larger footprint in your area, slash grow into the next level. You can, if you keep doing things the way you're doing them now, you'll keep getting the same result. If you want a different result, you have to do some things differently. The theory is that there are some predictable things that, that would need to be done differently in order to move into the next size group, size category. That's the theory. And it's in these six areas that things would need to be done differently. And things need to be done differently in all six areas, not just in any one. So here's the theory then. Say, say you're a family sized church and maybe have some of this out of alignment. You get it all in alignment, you develop to be healthy. Yes. Okay. Is the theory then that, okay, now you're healthy, therefore you're automatically going to bring people in because people are going to like healthy. And then you will, your size will grow into the village size. Then you adjust all of this to fit the village size. Or is it theory more, okay, we become the healthy family church, so we start changing these into the village size church, and then the village, then we will grow. So is, is it we're growing because we're healthy where we are, or is it we will grow because we change these six things to the size that we want to grow into? Or is it we are healthy where we are when these things are in alignment with one another. When there's two groups in these six areas, we are healthy as a family sized church. If we want to be healthy, and and that will be attractive to some people, so there will be some some growth. You will experience additional people coming to the congregation. There will come a point in time. Um, usually indicated by average portion of attendance, that you will begin
begin to have an average worship attendance that's beginning to be into the next uh, size top. The wise leadership will say, what then do we need to do in these six areas to prepare ourselves for what's coming? And planning those out, making incremental changes as they are possible until you are in alignment. So it's not a step, one, two, three. That's not how the, how the theory works. It's more a, a continuum. And you know, if you're in a church that has made a conscious choice to be a family-sized church, then you would not want to make those changes. And indeed, you might not have the people, enough people, to make those changes. So it's, so it's really important that the part of the, the documentation that we request to do assessment includes the guiding documents for the church, the church's statement of vision, mission, and purpose. And often in that, uh, the language that the church has chosen to use in talking about itself and in talking about what it believes God has called it to be reveals whether it is God has called that particular church to be a family type or some other type. So that's part of what is looked at in making all of these assessments and recommendations for possible next steps. So it's about knowing who you, who, who you are now and who God has called you to be. And if you are now who God has called you to be, then you get lots of affirmation at the size of it. If you are now, if what you are now is not what you believe God is, then you get lots of support to become what God called you to be. Hey, in the back. Has, in, in that cycle, the church life cycle, and um, you've got the birth part, <coughs> Has any work been done on the church planting into the full cycle? Um, because positions, responsibilities, ways of working are different than in a new church. So has the work been done to say, how does this feed in? How do you change from being a new church into a formed church? Yeah. If you'll recall when I talked about the developmental stage and oops, <laughs> and the description of birth being a period of rapid growth, and um, this is noted for its great flexibility and, and high level of experimentation, uh, which, is, which is especially true in new church plans. So doing that now is exactly what would be expected. If you, if you were starting a church and already had 53 million rules, and you knew, you knew who was going to be in charge of absolutely everything and, until God comes again, um, then that would like quickly move you right over there. <laughs> so, so the church plan fits in this. It fits, fits right in. fits right in. Um, I, there is um, a, a, a church plant that uh, was just affiliated uh, earlier this year um, in, in the state of Florida in the U.S. When the pastor planted that church, he did so with the self-understanding that she was uniquely gifted and called to be the pastor of a program-sized church which, um, in this context, of a nation, the pastor of a nation-sized church. She resisted every temptation to start worship too soon. Because what happens is if you start, wherever you start worship, your attendance at your first service of public 
public worship becomes your average attendance. So, in this instance, she decided, she knew herself that she was not she was not qualified, called, gifted to serve as the pastor of a family, a city, a county, but of a nation. Her first worship service, they had 153 people at the very first service of public worship. She worked on developing from the, from the time that she conceived of the idea and began working on it until the time of the first service was two and a half years. So when the first service happened, the people who participated in the service, the, you know, the lay people who did the, the greeting, the welcome table, uh, the social hour, the musicians, the ushers, Everybody who had a role in that service, one, understood what that church was called to be. They were highly trained in how to provide excellent ministry in their area. They understood what it was to be MCC and how they fit into the global movement. They understood the vision of the church and were able to talk about that vision to their friends. They had a schedule of activities already planned for the next six months so that when people arrived at that first worship service, there was something to offer them beside worship next week. That church has been affiliated for about maybe six months now. Their average worship is, you know, they have, they've already had the first church fight. So their average worship now is about 95 or so, and they're yeah, on, the, on the upswing, yeah. which is typical. I mean, that, that happens. Um, but she was very clear, very clear what kind of pastor she was. And part of what happens in the size success in the size summit is our pastors say, I am uniquely gifted to pastor a pastor size church. I don't know why I keep, now I understand why I keep frustrating myself in this church of 75 people who won't let me be me. I need to pastor a pastor-sized church. And so they move to another church, one for which they are uniquely gifted instead of, I'm here and so I've got to stay here until I can't stay here anymore. Um, and, and so that, that's another possible outcome. Obviously, that the, you know, the, the church, you know, the church makes certain good decisions and the pastor is able to make certain decisions. And, People who are in training for to become clergy are able to make certain decisions about the sermon. Of, you know, where where will I experience joy? So lots of stuff comes out of the summer. That's a loaded question. Yes. On, yeah. <clears throat> I'm just. Um, Curious to know more about that church plant. Mm -hmm. It was two and a half years before they moved to worship. How were the people pastored until that point? Um, were they members of other MCC congregations? Were they members of other churches? Did they just hang around and wait? Uh, what happened? They um, there were activities offered. The, the learning about MCC, the learning about what would become Open Circle, I guess the name of the church. Um, there were social events. So they, they focused first on building relationship with the people and selling the vision. 
And from the very first time that they gathered people together, and they, I mean, there was the you know, one who would become the pastor. And she started this as a lay person. Um, so the pastor started talking to her friend about this idea. And the first time she brought those friends, that small group of friends together, to help her develop this into reality, they received an offer. So they started from the very beginning investing not only their time and their prayer, but also their treasure into creating a, a financial base to support the work that was ahead of them. Um, so there was, there was lots of activity going on. There was planning going on, identifying people to be trained, you know, recruiting people to come in and come close enough so that they could become trained and when there was a significant number of people. Um, and, and there was lots of energy. So this wasn't a duh time. They were collecting email addresses from the community, <laughs> building relationships with other churches. Um, so, there, so there was lots of the under, you know, it's past you know, all the stuff that goes on. Well, you know, people think we're walking on water. So it's gathering a group of ministers to definitely with that. I'm saying again? Gathering a group of leadership <coughs> first, rather than the people who necessarily want a community. Right. She was very clear that her congregation would be a congregation that provides ministry, rather than a congregation that gathers because they need ministry. And as a result, they are providing ministry to lots and lots of people because there are lots of people in the congregation who are actively involved in their communities. Um, and, and the church has specific things that it is doing in the church's own name to provide service to meet the needs of the community, which then attracts other people who want to meet the needs of the community. And of course, it also it attracts people who have needs to be that, but that is not the that is not the primary organizing principle. So how do they deal with those people with needs? They deal with those people by having organized the congregation into care groups. You know, there are people who are trained equipped and supported in providing that level of care for others. So it happens, but the whole church doesn't, you know, the whole church doesn't focus everything on someone who's in need. 